Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I am joined by Brit. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. <laughs> from basically Brit. Uh, we decided to meet up and film a couple of videos together. So we just filmed Kiss, Mary, Mary Kill. I wanted to say fuck with that. <laughs> That's a different. No, it's, a, it's a children's thing. Yeah, yeah, it's like 18 years and under. <laughs> Kiss, Mary, Kill uh, with Game of Thrones characters. We are huge fans of Game of yes. Thrones. Oh and my this God, was love it. A really fun thing to do. I will leave a link to Brit's video in the description bar down below, <laughs> as well as somewhere in like the information box where you can click. Today, I wanted to discuss different book tropes. I wanted to do something a little different, have a little discussion with someone else in the booktube community because there are certain things that occur a lot of times in books and you might agree with it or disagree and I thought it would be interesting to see what our opinions were yes. on tropes that occur very often in books. Because I've never really thought about it that much actually. It's there but... Now yeah. I can just talk about it a little bit. The most common one that I think is love triangles. Definitely. I can think of a couple of books like mm -hmm. The Hunger Games, definitely. To All the Boys I Love oh, Before. Yeah. I still haven't finished that no. trilogy, so I cannot really discuss how it ended. I literally um, only read the first one. I'm gonna look at yeah. your bookshelf maybe. Okay. Wasn't it in the beginning of like City of Bones? Oh yes, like, of course. Yeah. Clary and, uh, and in The Infernal Devices, have you read that one? No. Oh no, well, there's one. a love triangle as well. So yeah. as you can see, there are like so many. Yes. But I think one of my main points with a love triangle is it really depends on the book because sometimes I am digging the love triangle yeah. actually if for example I either really hate one of the characters or one of the love interests you ship someone yeah then I really ship someone and then I'm just like I'm really rooting for those two but sometimes two of the main like two of the love interests are just a bit meh characters yeah. and are not very like, I also interesting really don't like it when you like them both equally yeah kinda. that's annoying as well because you're like I don't know who no. I am rooting for and I don't know who I like the most myself mm -hmm. as well you yeah know? sometimes it's just difficult because it depends you know on the way it's written some writers are just so well at writing characters with really different personalities yeah. but i love when i really have i want them yeah. to end up together but i hate it the most when you are rooting for that person and they end up it's with the not other happening. one. If you haven't read The Hunger Games, don't listen. Oh my god, listen. I was about to start The don't Hunger Games Don't listen to well. the rest of this. <laughs> I personally think back then, I read it like four years ago, so mm -hmm. I should reread it probably sometime soon. Yeah, but too. back then I really liked that Katniss ended up with Peter. 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 Yes, that was, I said yeah. Peter. Peter. Uh, Peter. Peter. But a lot of people really liked, what was his name? Gail. Gail? Gail. Yeah, I don't like, remember anymore. Yeah, Gail. But that character. <laughs> I was team Peter all the way actually. Yeah. Because I think they just met together so much more because they've both been through so much. Gil yeah. can never imagine what they went through, you know, yeah. with the entire Hunger Games. And, and just, felt, I don't know, it just didn't feel like their romance could be something no. real. Oh, I love Peter. I loved him too. He yeah. was so sweet. I love Oh my god, that's what I can remember from what I, yeah, when I read. Yeah, I definitely like, reread it. Yeah, I want to re read them in English and I don't oh, have English oh, books. Oh, so Oh my god, yeah. I should buy them. But yeah. that is one of the love triangles which I did like. One I didn't like it was the one in Shatter Me. I've only read that no, first I've book. No, I not read Shatter Me. I don't read it. I didn't no. like it. Um, <laughs> and I know that there was going to be a love triangle. I don't remember if it was really worked out in the first book mm -hmm. but I just remember that I didn't like it. Overall I think it really depends on the story. Yeah. It's not like I hate it or I love it. It just no. you know but it does it happen depends. so often. So every yeah, time true. that it does happen, I'm like, okay, here it is again. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> then we have the chosen one. Mm. I mean, the most obvious is yeah. Harry Potter. Of course. Um, Let me see which else you have. Um, Percy Jackson, maybe, kind of? Yeah, I've only read the first one. I've mm. read four books and I didn't read the fifth. And <laughs> I don't know when I'm gonna oh read the fifth. Chosen one, one by eight books, a full list on Goodreads. Yeah. So we looked up like a list on Goodreads, yeah. but we feel like it's more like, um, how did you, how did you say yeah, it? It's not like, a person is sort of chosen by um, a prophecy, yeah, by or prophecy or, whatever. or a god or whatever. <laughs> it may, mostly, it's just it all depends on that person without any sort of higher yeah. goal or whatever. Yeah. It's just that person is always the one to save the day or you know to do the big thing in the story, and that is what we see so many times, of course, with Harry Potter and Percy Jackson and the Hunger Games. Yeah. And you know, it's always that one main character that does everything. I kind of like it actually. I, I like it too, I think. Yeah. It's not something that bothers me no, at all. No, definitely not because I'm always, I'm rooting for that person because if I love the main character, I'm rooting for that person yeah. and if that main character sort of saves the day, I'm loving it. Yeah, so, me too. It's, yeah. I feel I, like it's very powerful as yeah. well. It's like, you can do it by yourself. Well, not all not, the time. No, of course, I do with the help of yeah, others. Yeah, but I love the chosen one. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually. Kind of like, you fulfill your own destiny yeah. kind of that idea maybe. I, I 
just I'm okay with it. Yeah, <laughs> That's I like my it. Opinion about exactly the same. One. I think the next one is really interesting. Mm -hmm. White able-bodied straight protagonist. Yeah. So I asked Britt what able-bodied. What that means? Just like you know, us. We don't have any physical disabilities no. or mental. No, just no like, mental illness. Yeah, something. we just don't. We don't have that. So you know, an able-bodied white. Most of the time, a male yeah. protagonist as well. That is something that, of course, we saw so many times mm -hmm. in older books. Say, for example, again, you can name all of the the big examples like Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, Diverse. Yeah, that stereotype of yeah. person. But then back then, I did not think about that whatsoever. Actually. No, but that's bad, I think, because now there are a lot more uh, LGBTQ, more like diverse books with mm -hmm. people who have like mental illnesses, like anxiety, or who have like a different skin color yeah, than exactly. what we have. And I feel like uh, if you are not aware of it, that was exactly it. Then you get influenced and you see all of these different people, you mm -hmm. meet all these different people, and then you just get used to. People yeah. being different and not white, able-bodied protagonists. When I was younger and I read all of those books, I did not really think about it. But when everything started to, you know, on booktube and book Twitter, and, and like when people started talking about that more, yeah. I was like, whoa, that is actually so true. Yeah. Because just our picture that we always had in our mind. It's it, actually such a small group. Yeah, it's There are so, so many more people If I just that. look around me, when I'm just anywhere in the street, I'm just, you see so many different personalities or nationalities and yeah. racial and just Ethnicities, Eth racial ethnic ethnicities. Why is that word so difficult? Yeah, and just you know, people who have maybe disabilities, and yeah. it is actually so strange that they didn't include that in um, older books back then. So there wasn't young. this discussion as well. Yeah, so there's not that discussion, but you're also young, so yeah. you don't really. I feel like when you're younger, you you do have your own opinion, but mm -hmm. it's not developed. No, exactly. And so now that we are older, I feel like we have seen more of the world. Yeah. We're gonna see so much more of Definitely. the world. I think when I was younger, it just didn't bother me. But now when I read a book that, again, has a white, able-bodied, mostly male protagonist, I'm like, Ugh. it's just <laughs> so generic. And yeah. You want something different. Yes. So that's why I'm really just appreciating all of the new diverse books that are coming out. And I'm really, yeah, I just really, really love it. Really interesting to I'm find really, out yeah. more about different cultures. Exactly. Different and I'm so so yeah. interested in reading those books as well. For example, I loved Children of Blood and Bone oh, because yeah. it was Amazing. also an own voices book and I really felt like her culture sort of coming and yeah. at me through the pages. Yeah, it was really amazing. So yes, I really love that. It's and also nice to read something from a perspective of someone who isn't straight. Yeah, like just bisexual, different passion, homosexual, different sexualities, yes. I haven't read an asexual book. But I'm just, either. you know, really broadening my reading horizon with diverse books. I'm really, really liking that. Then something that we noticed that happens a lot, like I don't know if it's only in like YA books, but just like in I, books yeah. in general, is that the parents are not in the picture. Mm -hmm. so or either like one parent or they're either Dead. I hardly read a book where it's literally just one happy family with a mother and a father or two mothers, two fathers or whatever. Yeah. Just you never see this whole yeah, complete family, family. Or dead or poor. Yeah, but maybe that's what they also use. That's the, like the writers maybe use that to sort of give the main character a struggle yeah. to live with, to have a struggle mm -hmm. in the book. So I think that is also one of the reasons why they do that. But sometimes I'm just like, come on, I want to see a happy family Yeah, I mean, once. I think we both live in like a They're, happy exactly. family where the parents are still together. Yeah. And I don't know if your parents are married. Yeah, my parents are yeah. married and they're still Mine together. Too. So. so we live in like the, um, yeah, what the, people say, the perfect family. I can't really remember the last time I read a book where it literally was like that. The only books where I have seen where the parents are included or one of them is included, it's like very family based, are the books by Morgan Matson. Mm. I think in those books only one of them had like a happy family kind mm -hmm. of situation, but otherwise it was focused on like struggles in the family, but still the other parent was really nice or mm -hmm. they both were very nice. So I think her books are really good if you want to have more like a family based story. I'm actually reading We Are The Arms now. I think you really like that book. That's one of my favorite books yeah. this year. Oh, I oh love my it. god. His mother is addicted to like smoking and yeah. just uh, not very mentally stable no. as well. But maybe that is, you know, one of the things that our main character Henry has to just deal with. And, and there are definitely a lot of people out there who also have parents with like yeah. an addiction mm -hmm. or a mental illness. But that one is also good, like family based. Yeah, true. Also about his brother, about his yeah. grandma. I think that one is also a good one to read if you want to have more like a family type of book. It's really focuses, yeah, it really focuses on a family even though it's not like a complete family, you no. know? But I really, I'm loving that book. Yes, <laughs> nice. oh my god. <laughs> Sometimes writers are like, let's throw in all the tropes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's really, it is something that- People really, like, yeah, it's very popular. They really have to think about it well, because if they don't so sort of execute like it well, and yeah. it's just eh. another trope. But I've left it out. I kind of like some tropes, as you probably 
can tell. Yeah, so those were all the different tropes that we wrote down and wanted to discuss with each other and mm -hmm. with you guys. Let yeah. me know in the comments what you think of exactly. them. Yeah, I'm really curious to hear your opinion. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to our channels by clicking somewhere here on the screen and I will also leave a link to Brit's channel in the description <laughs> bar down below as well as all of our different social media yeah. pages. You have good reads, right? Yes, I have good reads as Okay, well. you have Twitter, Everything. Instagram, whatever. <laughs> it's all in the description bar down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye.